Hello everyone, welcome to Proto's Papers. This is the 51st discussion in our series and it's titled Key Repeated Patterns of Revelation. You can find this two-page fact sheet at Proto'sPapers.com. As we read through the book of Revelation, we notice the repetition of peculiar words and phrases, which gives the impression of a worldwide apocalypse instead of a national judgment confined to the first century land of Israel. This is due to a combination of translation missteps and our lack of knowledge regarding the far-flung location of the Jewish people. We are putting forth two propositions, reasoned from Scripture, for the reader to try on to see if a sharper understanding of the book can be had. In proposition number one, we assert the Greek word ye, spelled G-E, used over 70 times in Revelation and translated as earth, should have been translated as land, specifically referring to the promised land. For example, most Bible translations show Revelation 7-1 to read, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth. The Hebrew world view was not of a square earth, but rather circular. It was their land that had four corners. It should read, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the land. More evidence for the land translation accrues when we see the phrase, those who dwell on the earth, used ten times in Revelation. Don't all people live on the earth? Why would a phrase be used repeatedly if it's simply stating the obvious? This makes no sense. Rather, it was a reference to the people living on the land, the promised land, the land of Israel. We are using this preferred term, land, for this document. Let's look at part A. Those who dwell on the land were being judged as Jesus had promised in Luke 21, 25. The dwellers on the land were on an evil track. Their hands were stained with the blood of the martyrs. They were drunk with the harlot's bloody wine. They celebrated the deaths of the two witnesses. The dwellers on the land listened to the lying words of the false prophet and worshipped the odious beast, mesmerized by its apparent power. In B, we see striking similarities between the kings of the land and those who dwell on the land. The kings, that is the religious political leaders, were guilty of consorting with the great harlot. They were steeped in corruption and evil, enemies of God and his son, in league with the harlot and the beast. Take a look at Proposition 2. We believe the phrase, tribes, tongues, peoples, and nations, used seven times in Revelation, with slight variations and appearing to encompass so many people, refers to first century, century jewelry. How do we come to such a seemingly bizarre conclusion? Let's look at Acts 2. It states that on this Pentecost feast day, there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men, from every nation under heaven, each with their own language. Most people do not realize great numbers of synagogues were scattered throughout the empire and countries beyond. Fifteen different countries are named in Acts 2. The Jews were the people from every nation traveling to Jerusalem three times a year for their prescribed feast days. Jerusalem was their home away from home. In the first two references of Part A, the tribe's tongues, peoples, and nations were rejoicing. They had been part of that crowd, but were no longer. They had come out of these fourfold referenced people. We see very different behavior in other references to peoples, tribes, languages, and nations. Their demeanor, though, is familiar to us. They spitefully gloat over the deaths of the two witnesses, denying them a decent burial. They subjugate themselves to the beast and are under the rule of the blood-drinking harlot. The next section, B, carries 20 references to the nations. The nations destroyed the temple. See Preter's paper 37. They were in league with the blood-drinking harlot. They were the object of God's wrath and the target of the armies of heaven. They would have to endure the trampling in the wine press of the wrath of God's Son. In summary, we at Preter's Papers see, number one, those who dwell in the land, two, the kings of the land, number three, peoples, tribes, languages, and nations, and number four, nations, as references to first century zealot-led Israel. Preter's Papers 1 and 2 are foundational to these studies, 
As usual, don't believe us or anyone else, but prove all things for yourself. Thank you for listening. Shalom.